key to the utility of any Eurorack module is how well you can control it through CV, and the Disting NT is no exception. Any parameter on any algorithm can be mapped uh, for control through CV, through the inputs, um, and indeed also by MIDI and by I2C, all of which I'm going to demonstrate to you using my little Michigan Synthworks, um, what used to be called the ATEM, I believe it's now called the F8R. Um, which outputs CV and MIDI and I2C. And I'm going to do this with a little patch I've set up with the Curbinator algorithm. Um, I've got some audio coming through from um, a drum loop and I've got the Curbinator uh, clocked from an FH2, which is over there, you can't see it. And it's just going to sit there and play stuff. And we're going to map some of the probabilities uh, so that we can control them from faders. Um, just to remind us what that does, so for example, a pitch up probability. Probability that a slice is pitched up and similarly pitched down and so on. Um, so, I mean, it's super easy to just fly through these and tweak them as you go, but it would be easy, even easier if you could do more than one at the same time, which is what we're going to be able to do by mapping these to faders. Obviously, you could use LFOs, other sequencers, anything you like that outputs a CV, um, but we're going to use this for now. So, the mappings menu um, is in the menu, mappings, and then there's CV mappings, MIDI mappings, and I2C mappings. And they're all quite similar. Um, you get to choose the parameter you want to map, what you want to map it from, and then a few things that define the relationship between the incoming CV or MIDI or whatever to the parameter value. Um, what I will use, uh, there's a shortcut on that button there, which takes you straight into the mappings menu wherever you happen to be. And whichever way you go in, whatever parameter you're looking at at the time is going to be the active parameter when you get to the menu. And then if you change that and change a few different, map a few different parameters, when you go back to the algorithm, you see that I've changed that to play. Now play is the active parameter. So it all syncs up, uh, so it's easier to navigate. So let's set, um, what did I say I was going to do? Pitch up. So we'll go uh, CV mappings, parameter pitch up, and we'll map it from, well, let's patch the cable in first, I guess. So we'll take output 8 and we'll stick it in input 9 of the Disting NT. So that source needs to be input 9. And the rest of these things are actually fine. Um, the F8R is putting out 0 to 5 volts and the range of that parameter is 100. So that default settings work out nicely. Back to the parameter. And if I now move the fader, you can see it's changing the parameter value. Like that. So that's all there is to it, really. You map things and they, they change. So let's do another one. Actually, before I do that, let me show you something else. Um, I say that's a shortcut button. What that's a shortcut to is a setting. So uh, it's in the user interface section. By default, it takes you to the mappings menu. If you know you're only ever going to be mapping, say, CVs rather than MIDI, you can actually change that to be CV mappings and then pressing that button goes straight into the CV mappings menu, which is even quicker. So let's, we've got pitch up, let's map, uh, what should we map? Uh, reverse is another good one. So let's go bop and we'll map reverse to, what did I, I didn't plug that in, input 10, sorry. There we go. And now that's our uh, pitch up, and that's our reverse. And now, of course, we can control them both at the same time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can connect as many as you've got inputs there for uh, with CVs. You don't have to do one, one per thing. You can have um, one CV controlling multiple things. So say I wanted that slider to also control fifths. Uh, I'd put that on input nine as well. Maybe I don't want that to change quite so much, so not that much. 
uh, let's say just a little bit. So there, when I move that slider, pitch up is changing, fifths is changing by less. So there you go, that's, that's CV mapping. Um, any parameter on any algorithm, you can do that. So now let's take these cables out and do exactly the same with MIDI. Um, so let's, I'm just going to put that button back to its default of mappings because um, I'm not going to just use CVs. Um, so MIDI, um, rather than hook up um, TRS or DIN MIDI or direct connections, I'm going to use USB MIDI in this particular case um, just because it's convenient for this demo. So that's the USB cable. So I've actually got the F8R connected to a computer and then the computer connected to the disting to send the MIDI through. Um, so when I move a slider now you can see you've got USB input coming from the um, from here. It's all the same you could like I say you could use TRS or DIN MIDI or the select bus or USB MIDI from anywhere you like it all comes through to the same place and is MIDI. And indeed if you want to check what you've got MISC menu MIDI monitor. There we go. So that's showing me all the messages flying through from here. Um, so yeah, m mapping to MIDI is, is extremely similar. What should we map this time? Pitch down this time, maybe. So we'll go mappings, MIDI mappings this time. And then um, we could do, um, well, actually, let's, you could just change it manually, or you can use learn, which is, let's refer to our help. Push, learn is this one. So we'll go learn, and then it says learn active, and then it's learn that. So there we go. So now that fader is mapped. Pitch down. What else should we do? Um, stutter, let's do stutter. So MIDI mappings, stutter, learn on that one. There we go. So that's exactly the same sort of thing we had going on before, but with MIDI. And you'll notice that with MIDI, you can optionally, this is a setting you can turn off, have it switch to the parameter you're changing as you change it. So that's MIDI. And then exactly the same thing um, you can do with I2C. So let me, um, let me just unmap those two things, so I'm not trying to change them with MIDI and I2C, though it would be fine if I did. Um, right, so that's now unmapped. Nothing happening there. I2C will set the I2C address of the this thing. Um, the firmware in this is expecting to find it on hex 31 and now see we've got I2C input happening when I move sliders and USB but we're not not currently going to use that. So same deal. Uh, let's what haven't we mapped yet? Uh, let's map glide. So let's do pitch up and then we'll map glide. So mappings menu I2C mappings this time and then we'll put that on controller zero I believe that one is and on and there we go. And now we've got our glide map through I2C. And again, there's an I2C monitor, which is here. You can see the I2C messages you're getting from the thing. Um, there we go. So yeah, mappings, you can map any parameter on any algorithm to CV and or MIDI and or I2C and it will uh, control the disting. And I should mention at this point perhaps that these, all of these mappings are saved as part of the preset. They're not separate. Um, so as soon as you bring this back up, all these mappings will be in place ready for you to play. That's it for now.